Hey, I wonder what the Holy Bible says about is God really love, particularly when you think about the seven last plagues. But uh, in order to get into it, we're welcoming Pastor Ben Ray. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Hi. <laughs> and with you is Sarah Jane Bishop. Hi. Yeah, okay, a Bible <laughs> worker and a church pastor joining Marie. Now, uh, Ben, the seven last plagues, what are they actually all about? Well, the book of Revelation right. uses Old Testament stories okay. to give us big picture ideas okay. for the book of Revelation. So if we were to understand the seven last mm. plagues, we need to go back to the Old Testament to figure okay. it out and look at the last plagues there. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, like, the seven last plagues could be just talking about a story from the Old Testament. That's exactly right. Now, some people would think, hang on a minute, I know my Bible. Mm -hmm. There's supposed to be ten plagues from Egypt, not that's seven right, plagues. That's right, that's right. And that <laughs> is the exact point. There's ten plagues, not seven. That's <laughs> right. Now, let me try and explain that. Yeah. If you look a little deeper, you'll notice that the seven last plagues out of the ten that hit Egypt... Okay only affected people who refused to accept God's rescue plan for them. Oh, okay. And so in the same way, we can see that the plagues referred to in the book of Revelation mm -hmm. will only affect people who refuse God's rescue plan, who refuse okay. God's help. Now, now, come on, come, Ben, the, a question many people ask is, so did God love the Israelis and hate the Egyptians? I mean, what's the story here? Well, that's not it at all. Yeah. God loves everyone. Okay. And in fact, what you'll see if you look back into the Bible story mm -hmm. is that God offered his rescue plan to other people and many Egyptians mm -hmm. actually joined the Israelis mm -hmm. and they became known in the future as the mixed multitude that went oh, okay. with them. Yep. And so God offered his rescue plan to more than just uh, the Israelis. And in time, those people who joined in were just recognised as Israelis. So oh. God's offered his rescue plan in the past to anyone who would say yes. Okay. And I think that's what God's trying to say through Revelation, okay. that whoever would say yes to his rescue plan, okay. he's, he's got his arms open. Oh. So God's truly a God of love for all people. I would have to say yes. So if you're not Israeli... You're still all right. Yeah, you're still loved, <laughs> even in the Old Testament times. That's yeah. pretty magic to think about. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Sarah, how does uh, St John, though, in the book of Revelation, describe these seven last plagues? You know, what's well, well, actually, all of the plagues, apart from the sixth one, just okay. sound like these big and humongous of environmental disasters. Oh, okay. But let's actually look at it. We'll look in Luke okay. chapter 21, starting at verse 11. Okay. Where it actually says... Oh, this is Jesus talking. Yes, it is Jesus yeah, talking. Okay. Yeah, okay. There will be great earthquakes famines mm. and pestilences in various places mm. and fearful events and great signs from heaven. Mm -hmm. And we'll turn over the page of verses yeah. 25 and 26 it says, mm. there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. Mm. On the earth nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Mm. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Whoa. So Jesus Christ himself predicted massive environmental disaster. Yep, and it sounds pretty hard out. Yeah, it does. Okay, so how does that relate to Revelation? <laughs> okay, well, let's look at what it says in Revelation okay. chapter 16. Okay. So verse 3 gives us the first and the second. Okay. The first one being a terrible disease to sweep the earth, okay. which we already see now. Oh, like, no pan like pandemics. and Like pandemics. Like yeah, what did we yeah. have this year? Was it swine flu? Oh, swine flu, yeah, bird flu. Yeah, we had that, and that's just a New Zealand. Then we were fearful of AIDS, oh, yeah. which is still a terrible thing in Africa. And we can even argue now yeah. that cancer is just spreading like a disease. Okay. It's everywhere. That, yep. That's self-caused a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But it's still happening. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. And the second one that's mentioned there is that Earth becomes so polluted, it's mm -hmm. life die. Mm -hmm. So, yep, we see that happening. Oh, the oceans are... Yep. Actually, we're worried about that now. <laughs> yeah, we're worried about that now. Yeah, and it's the bed tides. The past and as well. the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, yep. So in verse 4, we see the third one. It okay. says, The pollution in freshwater rivers and springs on earth is so bad they become undrinkable. Okay. And you see that big time. I see it back home, back home yeah. in Rotorua, when we're told not yeah. to swim in some of our lakes or some of our rivers. Yeah. And that's just putting your head under the water or meningitis yeah. out in the hot springs. Has, put hasn't your head it always under. been like that? It's been like that for eight. It just seems to be getting worse and worse okay. and worse. And we're just oh. seeing that happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll carry on. In verse 8, it talks about the fourth one. It says, yeah. global warming increases to such a point mm. that the scorching sun causes famine and distress on people, mm -hmm. which doesn't sound too great. <laughs> no. <laughs> verse 10, it mentions the fifth one, where it talks yeah. about darkness covering the land. Yeah. So these massive environmental catastrophe, and okay. we don't know what form that was going to come in. Could be acid, rain, clouds from whatever. Oh, it could be anything, yeah. okay. but it's just a yeah. disease okay. spreading from okay. that as well. Yeah. Yep. 
and in verse 17 we see the seventh one. It talks right. about massive earthquakes and mm. hailstorms mm. and global destruction hits mm. the earth's large cities, especially <laughs> the ones on coastal areas. So that's when I move back home. <laughs> I move out of Christchurch being so close to the shoreline. I move back home. Tura, tura. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. One of the reasons I'm in New Zealand, I'm an Aussie, is that uh, I figure why not come to Christchurch, one of the last places where there's great fresh water? <laughs> I mean, man, in my country, they're worried. They're already starting to think about salination plants. They're worrying yeah. out, running out of water already. Yep. Yeah, but um, the reason we've got Ben here today is Ben is a pastor who specialises in good news and stories of great hope. So, Ben, from this disaster, <laughs> where's the hope? <laughs> it does sound like a lot of bad news, but if you yeah. look at it, yeah. we don't need the Bible to tell us that yeah. the world's in a really bad way. Mm. We see these things falling apart all around us all the time. Mm. Here's where God can step in. Mm. And if we look back into the Bible story in the Old Testament, we can see that God offers a promise of hope mm. for people who need rescuing.